what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Howdy, howdy. For all the new subscribers, what up? We picked up a couple of thousand of y'all in the last month. We are very thankful, appreciate you guys. We have all of our new merch on the link just below this video. That'll take you directly to Bunker Branding's site. You can get any of the stuff that you see us wearing in any of these episodes. And we also wanted to take a second to give a shout out to SNS Diesel. If you drive anything diesel related, you need to go check out ssdiesel.com. These guys have a ton of stuff that will keep your diesel truck on the road, maybe even some stuff you didn't know that you wanted. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hope you guys enjoy it. What's up? Welcome back to the shop. What's up, Twelver? How's your brother in there? I don't know, dude. My brother's kind of whack. I'll introduce you to him one day. It'll all make sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's weird. So we're back on the CUDA. We left off last time. Steven was finishing up his bracket that we made for a high mount para steering pump. Flip that around. It's fresh back from powder coat. Yes, yeah, some poor boy powder coat. I need to powder coat that better still. This is some dupla color out in the parking lot. Built this bracket. This piece sets up here on the intake on that side. Boom, attaches there. The bottom sits down here. Boom, shakalaka and the power string pump itself and the rest of its bracket ties into the timing case. I'm kicking parts across the floor. I don't need that. And so we have that solved. We have not figured out what we're gonna do about the belt we haven't measured the belt length yet steven got a bunch of stuff back taped and painted off so now the engine is all one color nice and presentable as of last night all the stuff showed up from smetting the smetting loves matt and they basically have given him every single component that they make so we're going with a 464 8310 for the fueling that we have currently that is the best option for matt by the time we get done with the fuel we probably could have run a single 75 on this truck car is that what it is i mean it is that not a car? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's got duels on it, dude, and an 11.5 in the back. Like, <laughs> yeah, but we, but we still have a car. Okay, though. so it's a car. Yeah, duly car. Y'all leave a comment and tell us if it's a car or a truck. They're all going to say it's a car. Working on this truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is going to be perfectly sized for about 650 to 700 horsepower. That's ringing on it pretty good, but... Matt likes high shaft speed, so they'll probably want to get that thing zinged out for its work. Whatever you can do to get max shaft speed he'll do we have an intake plate from these dudes we got some spacers and hardware and stuff there's a gasket to seal it and a big bright strawberry red air cleaner if you couldn't tell that this it's is from smetting just look at it five inch intake tube stainless cast manifold I have not used one of these before some bolts. and some bolts studs actually yeah studs an those look like me they, they look like they're you? studs like oh, it, I thought you, know you meant just having one nut on the end. Wow, okay, demonetized. In the <laughs> Sorry, video, I'm let's all go home. home. We have an HX40 downpipe that bolts to the back of the turbo with the clamp, also from Smetting. Which I may, we may only use that as the flange and hood stack it because this car doesn't have exhaust, so we're not fixing to build custom exhaust That is a great three point. days. There is not a lot of room to get a uh, four inch or a one inch pipe to go through there. <laughs> So we're going to uh, have to figure out what we're going to do about exhaust. I think, like Steven said, a hood stack is probably how this is going to go so that we're For done now. in time. How many days do we have now? So this is uh, six days left? Five days. Friday, and we need to be done by Thursday. So six days, six days. Including the weekend. Yeah, that's if you skip church and Saturday night pool tournament that you were in. Yeah. So Now I'm, got a, I'm actually in a log chopping competition um, on Friday nights. Yeah. Yeah, I do ballet Saturday morning. Yeah. I have brunch with the local... Taxidermist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, I'll be here I like working. to practice onion chopping yeah. on Sundays. So I'll try to move some things around. I'll pencil you in. And I'm also a furry. Uh, I do furry things. So nice. like I'm not going to get into details about my personal <laughs> life. Okay. But yeah, I'm just you telling you so. that I've got a full schedule and I'll do what I can. All right. Do you have one of those things that like has a ball on it and it goes around your head? And no, I have of... one of those things that has a ball on it that has a tail hanging off of it though. Does that count? Yeah. That uh, if you could wear that. Um, yeah, then... I'm actually wearing it <laughs> right now. I hope that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's hot. Actually, it's not cool. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. 
far as the air stuff, we have that figured out. Thanks, Smetting, for hooking that up. We have reached out to our friends at SNS Diesel and talked about a 10 millimeter CP3 and a set of 100 over injectors. And we're gonna need a turbo. We're working on the fuel side of things. The trans T case combo is basically done and in. Oh. We got a few things to button up on that. We got this right here. I guess while we're waiting on fuel, we can mess with this. We need to pull. So this was the kill. Uh, cable for the P pump. We're not Shut using off. that anymore, so that needs to go. We're not drive by cable anymore. We have a fourth gen pedal that we need to mount in there and plug in. So we got that. That's the right connector and shit. Yeah. Here. Okay. We got that that goes up right. in there. So we got to make a bracket for the pedal. We had this harness built by Firepunk Diesel. If you're building anything standalone, you're going to come and swap something and it's common rail. Firepunk makes a really, really nice clean harness. It's loomed really well. Everything is labeled. It's really high quality connectors. Very nice setup. Pretty, pretty cool uh, pass through piece that goes through the firewall so that everything's clean. And we opted to mount the ECM inside the car. We're trying to make it look like it has as few electronics as humanly possible. That's what we're going for. We have no clue where we're starting, but we're starting on something. No, I'm gonna put the entire front of the engine back together. Nope. Okay, so making some headway on the CUDA. Today is Tuesday. We need it to be ready and running at the latest, like Friday. We're waiting on a few sensors to show up. That's kind of where we're at, so we can start plugging in the harness, routing all that stuff, mount the ECM today. We have the serpentine belt figured out on the high mount power steering setup. We're waiting on injectors and injection pump still. So mount the gas pedal today, mount the radiator, get all the coolant lines hooked up. I got a little bit of electrical to figure out down there by the starter, a couple little fuel lines. I got a fitting come in to make the power steering light. I mean, there's a day's worth of work doing little piddly stuff. So it'll be ready for injectors and sensors that's, by the end of the day. And that will be held up <clears> on parts basically. And at that point, that's the only thing we have left is to install the, the fuel side stuff. Cause you can't put, I mean, we could mount the rail, I guess, but that's about the only other yeah, thing you can like put on there. worth of work that makes it harder for you yeah. if you just wait, you know. So we talked to the guys at SNS. Go so SNS. 10 millimeter CP3, 100% over injectors. That's enough fuel to make that turbo spin faster than it needs to yeah. spin. We definitely can't wait for parts to show up because all we want to do is get it fired up and running. We kind of have a deadline, so it'd be that nice too. to, you know, <clears throat> be ahead of the deadline. So in the meantime, while we're waiting on parts, y'all should go to bunkerbranding.com, search Holden Bros, and buy you one of these amazing Holden Bros t-shirts. Nine different shirts, and we happen to match perfectly seven of the eight days of the week. Yeah. How's the pedal coming there, bud? I'm about finished. Yeah? Yeah. What do you got? I got, got a piece of non-treated pine that's been oil soaked, so it's, it's treated pine. Um, and I needed an inch and a half thick spacer. And well, that's what a two by four is. So I whipped it in half with a screwdriver. Okay. Um, and I think I'm just gonna self tapper it. I got some metal self tappers to go through the sheet metal into the wood. It shouldn't rip, like he's not ripping up on the pedal, so like yeah. it shouldn't come out. Okay. Yeah, no, that looks super I clean. I could paint it or something. No, I think you just leave it. It looks so professional the way that it is. Leave it like that. We've got an inch and a half spacer to pick the pedal up off the firewall. That's basically so exactly about right. level with that pedal there. Right. And when you go full throttle, you stop just shy of the of the floor. Like that's the floorboard right there. Yeah. So come up a little bit where right. you got. Yeah, right you know, where your sharpie mark is. It looks perfect. No, I'm so gonna I'm gonna pull the treated two by four out. That was just for mock up. Okay. As oh, much as I wish I could be done. 
You have to make stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make something out of metal to replace that. I got the radiator in and the hoses. Looks like you got the turbo on. Yeah, I haven't filmed that, but it's still on from two days ago. Uh, yeah, so don't pay attention to that because we're gonna put that on here in a second. Yeah, that's gonna. That's, that was a test fit, not a film fit. Appears to be the downhill stretch of it. No, there's nothing's going against this, dude. It's smooth sailing. Yeah, we've overcome about 75 things that are dumb and time consuming in small pieces. But uh, well, we've got some really good news because Santa Claus came today. Thank you, Santa. Stuff that just showed up from SNS. They shipped some stuff yesterday overnight. Ended up with a 10 mil CP3. This is enough pump to support all the power that we need to make. The goal is to make 650, 700. This is plenty for that. And then we've got to set a 100% over SNS injectors. Their flow just around 280 cc's at 1700 US and 180 MPA. You can basically calculate about three horsepower per cc. So if you're at 278, 280, um, well, you're close to 850, 900 horsepower worth of available fuel if you stayed at 1700 pulse and 180 MPA. So, uh, it ought to run pretty good. Yeah, we got the fuel. What we don't have enough of is air. So we're running a single 64 turbo. They're comfortable around 600. We're gonna see how comfortable it is around, I guess, 700 plus. Got the valve train stuff laid out here. Injector hold downs, bridges, rockers, trunnions, push rods from Hamilton. We're waiting on connector tubes. They're coming from our local Bosch dealer. We're gonna run the stainless six, seven style. When we get connector tubes, then we'll be able to set the rail up there, put all the fuel site stuff together, assemble the valve train, keep rocking and rolling. We've got a fleece fuel distribution block. This uh, replaces the fuel filter housing that came on this truck factory, or on Massive this engine rather. Thing that we don't need. This cleans this stuff up really well. Anytime you're trying to make something cleaner, especially if you're motor swapping a common rail into something, this is just too easy because you've got a ton of provisions here for sensors and ports and returns and supplies and gauges and all kinds of stuff. Got the TK stuff figured out this morning. The hero oh. case making that shift. It takes a little bit of patience or a lot of patience. Especially in this setup. We're getting close. Today is Wednesday. Yeah, we should have all the fuel stuff buttoned up today. The main thing that we need is an ECM still that's in the mail or on horseback, wherever it is, we need it. We got our fingers crossed that that ECM works. If it doesn't, reach out to another buddy who has a 2100 that he bought basically sight unseen from a dude he's never met. That's also supposed to work. That should work, that we're paying to have overnight shipped to get here also. Now we're trying to get all that together. We're checking stuff off the list. Should have probably wrote a list, but we didn't. We just no, been, hey, look. just been hammering. Oh, dude, nice. I got okay. a list. Steven does have a list on the window. He's smarter than me. I would try to pretend like I can remember it all. Dude, it did it all. I forgot to put the crank in it. So anyway, we're on the downhill.
we are in the final stretch here. You can count on one hand what's left to get it knocked out. We're trying to make the intercooler pipe on this side work. We got a ugly ass lower radiator hose. Some of this stuff is just temporary so we can make it out to Super Sausage Fest or whatever. It's, it's called Meat Fest. Right on. Well, it is the moment of truth. We did the best we could to film everything we could. We have not cranked it. We have not done anything. We think that the parts are in right. We've got fuel pressure. Nothing's caught on fire with the key on. Got power to the ECM. We got coolant, power steering fluid, transmission fluid. And a, what looks like a complete engine. You wanna crank it? No, I wanna watch parts come out. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Did I forget to tighten the injection line? <clears throat> if you don't tighten that. Is power steering pump drew the fluid down and there's a leak for power steering fluid. Okay. All right, well, I, I heard six pistons fire. Steven says he left all the lines loose because he was bleeding the air. Yeah, that was. You notice how right after it was bled, it started? I'm a professional, I know what I'm doing. All right. Dumb. What? I'm gonna film in there and- All right, here we go. I got film in there. And is anything working there? Is there any gauges, anything? I don't know, I, I didn't even pay attention, let's see. Well, I don't have oil pressure or coolant hooked up, so those may not work. Well, if we- Maybe the tackle works. You'll know if it doesn't have oil pressure. Ready, bro? No tack. I'm charging, got 22 pounds of fuel pressure, no oil pressure. Okay, let's check for leaks and I guess let's check for leaks. another one of Matt's cars run again yeah this time ahead of schedule actually by yeah, a little bit we have food to eat beers to drink yeah we have to have a good time we got what two things left to do here we gotta make an exhaust the ignition switch back in the dash put the transfer case vent line on I gotta extend coolant temp and oil pressure to the other side over there okay so so we got a little bit of stuff deal. see y'all tomorrow morning see you manana Okay guys, <clears throat> sleepy head. Howdy, how's your mama now? She needs to get up and get after it. We got work to do. You got little poops in there? Let's go dude. All right, what were we talking about? We split last night. Well, we turned the camera off last night and we were fixing to walk out the door and realized that we hadn't finished the barbecue pit. Yeah, or I didn't really even say anything about it. Steven had a pretty cool idea about a barbecue pit for... Competing against the best in the world at anything on a barbecue pit. This is definitely gonna make your Wagyu steak just taste so much better. First Wagyu you've ever had that's got torque. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we took our piece of one inch whatever pipe this is called, set it in the mill, drilled the holes on the center line and tapped it, pipe thread for these pieces of copper tube and then threaded the grill pieces on the end. And when it's done, they'll sit even in the bores. So when you're done, this is what you got. Looks pretty sweet. 
So the idea is to take and mount the little trunk line there off of the main cap bosses with like some flat metal or something we're going to weld to that piece. The top side is going to be this piece of plate that uh, the front guy Danny bought from a crackhead who walked over here off of the interstate carrying this thing. Yeah, and he was got to be one of the strongest crackheads there is because that thing weighs like 80 to 100 pounds. This is now the griddle for the top of that. I think we're going to use like head bolts or something. And then once this piece is attached, we should be able to attach the whip and uh, have a six burner griddle. Happy 12. first ever 12 valve barbecue pit ever. Uh, we can do turduckins, ostrich neck, manatee tail, field dress bunny. What else do I eat? <laughs> I mean, the list goes on. All right, so we get this thing done. Ostrich, pickles, buzzards Solid coming up. Man. While Steven's working on the rest of the barbecue pit, and I'm actually working on an exhaust tip. I Googled an image of uh, what they call a breacher. We were thinking that the, the end of like a shotgun barrel, sometimes they have like that jagged cap on the end of the barrel. And I uh, had a piece of five inch pipe out here, I measured it out. I've got the points indicated on the top side of it, split it up into eight equal sections. And I'm going through here with a square and I am drawing the intersecting points at 45s. Where they cross is where I'll stop the cut. And, uh, that'll make my teeth even throughout this piece. And then I think I'm gonna drill a few holes in the side of it and hopefully set this piece over. I'm gonna chop this, just this top section off. Set that over the top of the four inch piece that he has and use some like half inch flat strap to hold this piece and it'll look like the breacher on the end of a gun. We wanted to do full exhaust on the car and go down and out the back, but we just, we don't have the time. We don't have the material here either. Need quite a few things to be able to do that. We're gonna work on this for a minute and see if we can't make something kind of cool looking because we've got about two hours to have the car done, check all the fluids, test drive it, and then drive it out to uh, Matt's place, which is about 20 or 25 minutes from the shop. to do like a slight engine runtime cam break in tap it seating procedure we're gonna pull outside let it run for about 15 minutes as long as nothing leaks we should be good to go hopefully yeah i think we'll be good to go I think we are ready to go. We haven't shown you the finished barbecue pit yet. You just have to hang in there just for a second because we're gonna find out if this is gonna catch on fire and explode on the way out fire to meat fast or not. Oh yeah, I'm gonna grab a fire extinguisher and then we're gonna split. First little test drive. I'm excited. I might not show it, but I am. Yeah, I'm so tired. I'm tired, we're and exhausted. We're, and we're late, folks. We're late to the event. Yeah.
look like anything's leaking. No, it looks good. Works. You pick which one. You got 25% It's this chance. one. It's this one. Oh, Unless you'll change no, the... No, that's the door. This one is it's, ignition. It's this one. There, there this were not one. this many keys it's before. This one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the one. <laughs> well, we made a <laughs> few extras. Says Cuda. Next time. That's it. Till next time. Later.